Accessing SCP database. Warning. Unauthorized users will be terminated. Site redacted. D6104. Loading SCP-261. Initiating playback. SCP-261. The pan-dimensional vending machine. The object class is... safe. Special containment procedures. Any access to SCP-261 must be approved by staff with level 2 security clearance or higher. Any and all items dispensed by SCP-261 must be recorded along with the amount of money entered and the amount of time elapsed between uses. Currently SCP-261 may be used only 10 times in a 24-hour period with no transaction exceeding the equivalent of 500 Japanese yen. This amount is roughly equivalent to $4.71 USD or 3 pounds 39 pence GBP as of the year 2021. Testing approved by Site Command is not under these restrictions. Items dispensed by SCP-261 should be reviewed by site health and safety officials before consumption. Failure to do so releases the Foundation from any obligation regarding negative effects. Items deemed dangerous or useful to research will be confiscated by site security, with financial compensation provided in proportion to money spent. Description SCP-261 appears to be a large black vending machine with no front glass panel and a small keypad on the right side. SCP-261 was recovered in Yokohama, Japan. SCP-261 was brought to the Foundation's attention after investigation of an urban legend about a magic vending machine that was circulating on the internet. SCP-261 was found in a back alley behind a large shopping center with a handwritten sign saying out of order in Japanese taped to it. SCP-261 has no marks or identification of any kind and no locals remember when or how it came to be in its current location. Internally, SCP-261 appears to be a basic vending machine equipped to vend food and beverage items. After a key was made and the front door opened, no abnormal materials were found, and it was determined that SCP-261 has never actually contained any food or beverage items. The keypad, while connected and operating correctly, does not activate any of the dispensing mechanisms. When money is placed into SCP-261 and a three-digit number is entered on the keypad, SCP-261 will vend a random item. SCP-261 has not accepted any currency other than yen, with rejected currency being deposited in the coin return slot. It is unknown how these items appear, however SCP-261 will not operate when the door is open or when recording devices are placed inside. The number entered on the keypad has no effect on the item vended, nor has any pattern been detected. Items are always some form of snack food and typically have bright, attention-grabbing packaging. SCP-261 is capable of operating with no external power supply, but operation in this state will cause unstable vending to occur much more quickly than normal. If SCP-261 is used several times in a short period of time, and or large amounts of money are entered before an item is vended, SCP-261 will start to dispense bizarre items. While still food, their suitability for human consumption is often non-existent. And here is an attached log of items vended during testing phase 8. Phase 1 through 7 are not included in the paperwork I have. 800 yen has been entered for each item, items being dispensed every two minutes, and SCP-261 is attached to power. First item, Coke Zero, a can of Diet Coke packaging in English. It's interesting that they call it Coke Zero while it was a can of Diet Coke that was dispensed. I'm not sure if this is an inaccuracy of the researcher that made this recording, or maybe they somehow mixed it up. By the way, I would not drink that. Moving on. 
Cheetos, a small bag of Cheetos snack food, packaging in English. Black Black, a single pack of caffeinated chewing gum, packaging in Japanese. Yan Yan, a single Yan Yan cone with peach dipping frosting, packaging in Japanese. The Meiji Sega Company does not produce this flavor. Certainly sounds interesting. I would love to have given that a try. Pepsi Dragon Twist, a can of Pepsi Cola with a trace of fruit flavor, packaging in English. Flavor identified as dragon fruit. PepsiCo does not produce this product. We're getting more and more interesting as this goes along. Dark Side Cola, a can in quotes with clear plastic sides packaging in Japanese. Liquid inside is clear. When opened, liquid appears to react to the air and changes to dark black over a period of several seconds. The black coloration looks like billowing smoke and cannot be reversed. Liquid's taste described as cola with something spicy in it. The Little Bakery, seven grain. A small tube the size of a candy bar with a green button made of aluminum, packaging in English. When the top is twisted off, a mass of dough is extruded. Dough contains several enzymes and bacteria that have not yet been identified. On contact with air, these cause the dough to rise and bake, killing the microbes in the process. Produces a small, round loaf of bread weighing 250 grams. Taste described as good, but chewy. Lemon clams. Ugh. Thick plastic baggie with a plastic tube on the side, containing water and 12 clams. Packaging in Dutch. Following on-package instructions, the plastic tube was cracked like a glow stick. Liquid in the bag flashed to steam, venting from a hole that popped open in the top of the bag, slightly burning one researcher. Steaming finished after 38 seconds, after which clams were found to be fully cooked and infused with a mild lemon flavor. On investigation, clams match no recorded species. Diet Ghost, a can containing an instance of SCP-2107. Packaging was in English. Testing done on this instance provided similar results to other contained instances of SCP-2107. This marks the first time SCP-261 has vended another SCP object. Next we have Unknown. A small mesh bag filled with small, multicolored pyramids, packaging in an unknown language. Pyramids found to be very hard and unpleasant tasting, compared to chalk in taste and consistency. When placed in hot water, pyramids open and produce strings that quickly dissolve, coloring the water the same shade as the pyramid. Water had no additional taste, but testing revealed a sharp increase in mineral, carbohydrate, and protein content with several minerals unidentified at the present time. This content was found to be consistent with the recommended daily intake of nutrients for adult humans. Researcher ingesting the water reported stomach cramps two hours later, but no other effects. This next one is also unknown. Aluminum box with a small glass window on the side and a large round button on the top Packaging in an unknown language. Box is seamless and appears to be filled with small, round animals covered in fur, each with three small paws and a single large eye. Pressing the button causes the inside of the box to rapidly become superheated, cooking the small animals alive. Muffled noises and scratching were heard for several seconds during the cooking process. After 1 minute 30 seconds, the front panel opens and gives access to the now-cooked animals. Professor Kane volunteered to eat the animals, with no other researchers willing to do so. Taste described as crunchy and very spicy, with a small hint of beef. I don't know about you guys, but that one makes me feel kind of hungry. 
And lastly, we have another unknown entry. A tall, thin aluminum can, packaging in an unknown language. Opening the can caused a chemical reaction with the liquid inside the can. Liquid was apparently not intended for an oxygenated atmosphere and detonated violently, causing several injuries and killing two researchers. Testing discontinued and area cleared. Testing area observed to smell like citrus for several days. Man, now that's how I want to go out. Killed by a vending machine. And playback.